Hey readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire Books, and today I would like to bring you a review of The Collected Poems by Constantine Kavafi. Kavafi was a Greek man who lived in Alexandria, Egypt in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and he wrote a lot of really interesting poems that are about his experiences, but also about history and mythology and sort of classical topics that really appeal to me as a Latin teacher, but that I think could have meaning for anybody. So I'll be real, sometimes I really have a hard time with poetry, not because I think that it's bad or that I don't like it, but because it's so raw. I'm one of those people who really struggles with things like secondhand embarrassment and vulnerability shown by others because it makes me feel vulnerable and raw and embarrassed at the same time. <laughs> and so sometimes poetry just really is tough for me, but I really, really enjoyed Kavafi's work. I thought it was really excellent. And there were a few things that I thought were really, really cool about it and that we should all appreciate. The first is that if you're a history buff like me, there's a lot of really great poems that are inspired by both ancient history and mythology. So a lot of poems are in there about Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, as well as later Byzantine rulers. And my beloved Julian the Apostate, um, I reviewed Julian by Gore Vidal on this channel a couple weeks ago. And as he looks into these poems, Kavafi is really looking for themes that still apply today. Themes like religion, or knowing that you've lost a battle and having to deal with it, or having to say goodbye to life earlier than you wanted while also appreciating that there are beautiful things about it. A lot of Kavafi's poetry is generally concerned with time. For example, one of his earlier ones is called Candles, and it says, The days to come are standing right before us, like a row of little lighted candles, golden, warm, and lively little candles. The bygone days are left behind, a dismal row of burned out candles. Those that are nearest smoking still. Cold candles, melted and bent. I don't want to see them. Their sight saddens me. And it saddens me to recall their former glow. I look ahead at my still lighted candles. I don't want to turn around lest I see and shudder how fast the darksome line grows longer. How fast the burned out candles multiply. So I feel like it's interesting that this poem that's from the earlier set really sets the theme for a lot of poems later. So it's pretty clear from the, the collection that as Kavafi gets older, he likes to look back on his younger life as a source of art. And his memories are a way of keeping that part of himself alive. So Kavafi also writes a lot of homoerotic poems, and he definitely had a fantastic time in his 20s because a lot of his poems are about very attractive 20-something men having affairs and feeling that their desires are forbidden because of the time, but also experiencing genuine love and connection and lust and heat. And so if you want to read about how a man in the late 1800s and early 1900s is processing his sexuality and his knowledge that in society it's sort of considered forbidden, but for him it's a source of art and inspiration, then this is a really interesting set of poems to read. He definitely thinks a lot about memory and about how earlier events in your life come to you and how art is made from the experiences that you have had. And of course, these themes all show up in probably what's Kavafi's most famous poem, and in my opinion, the best. Just because it's the most famous doesn't mean that you have to go digging to find a better one. Sometimes a poem is the most famous because it's the best one. And for me, that's Ithaca. I love this poem so much. But there are many other treasures to be found in this book. So I'm going to read Ithaca to you, but you should check out the, the whole collection because there's some gems in here. When you set out on the journey to Ithaca, pray that the road be long, full of adventures, full of knowledge, the last Dragonians and the Cyclops. The raging Poseidon do not fear. You'll never find the likes of these on your way. If lofty be your thoughts, if rare emotion touches your spirit and your body. The last Dragonians and the Cyclops, the fierce Poseidon, you'll not encounter unless you carry them along within your soul, unless your soul raises them before you. Pray that the road be long, that there be many a summer morning, when with what delight, what joy you'll enter into harbors yet unseen. 
that you may stop at Phoenician Emporia and acquire all the fine wares, mother of pearl and coral, amber and ebony, and sensuous perfumes of every kind, as many sensuous perfumes as you can, that you may visit many an Egyptian city to learn and learn again from lettered men. Always keep Ithaca in your mind. To arrive there is your final destination, but do not rush the voyage in the least. Better it lasts for many years, and once you're old, cast anchor on the isle, rich with all you've gained along the way, expecting not that Ithaca will give you wealth. Ithaca gave you the wondrous voyage. Without her, you'd never have set out. But she has nothing to give you anymore. If then you find her poor, Ithaca has not deceived you. As wise as you've become with such experience, by now you will have come to know what Ithaca's really mean. I think that poem is so beautiful. I'm a Latin teacher, I was a classics major, so you know I've spent a lot of time with the Iliad and the Odyssey, and I just love the way that that poem conceptualizes Odysseus's journey. So if you haven't read the Odyssey, it's about a man who finishes a war and it takes him like 10 more years to get home. And he encounters all kinds of monsters and troubles and challenges along the way. And his goal the entire time is just to get home to Ithaca. But I love the way that Kavafi puts it, which is that it's really the journey that means something. And you become the person you are by going on the trip, not by getting there, which is, you know, something that people commonly say. But I really love the way that he expresses it and that it's not just about like, oh, you know, be wise. It's about, you know, try all the perfumes and go all the places and learn all the things. And you're supposed to really have that adventure in your life. So if you like that and you want some other tastes of kind of ancient history infused thoughts about life and the world and time, then Kavafi is definitely for you. You should absolutely check him out. Happy reading. <laughs>